Hey there, it's William from Boxer2Valve.com, back with a continuing episode of this R80 RT to S conversion. And before we get started on today's work, I just want to tell you something really pretty cool. Um, because so many people asked about these overalls, we now carry them. And so I've got a brand new pair on myself here. I just figured out my size, so I can cut the tag off now. And we imported um, a full range of sizes from Germany. We have them in stock now, and we should have something that'll fit pretty much everybody. And these are really pretty cool. They are a polyester cotton blend, and so they're machine washable, even in hot water, and you can put them in the dryer, and um, they're very good quality, made by a company called Shield. I like, really like the way they fit. Got a Velcro pouch here, and a zippered pouch here, and the nice deep pockets, which is really handy for putting your tools in. And they're light, comfortable, easy to move around in. Anyway, enough said about that. We have them, check them out on the website. They're available and we hope that you like that. So let's get back to work on this bike. What um, we kind of left off with is putting the S fairing together. And now it's time to um, get the controls in there, cables and so on. We're gonna deal with the instruments. Notice that one of the instrument lights is out. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that in a really cool way. We'll get to, that, get to that in a bit. And in the meantime, I'm gonna get the uh, control cables. Now, because this bike was an RT, obviously the cables are gonna be too long because it had really tall handlebars on it. So we're gonna have to change the cables. And that requires re changing the throttle cables in their entirety on this model. And on the choke um, or enrichner, it's just the upper cable that needs to be changed. The lower cables remain the same. It's just the upper one that is different in length. And that's why there's a little splitter here. So um, we'll get going. The, the throttle cables are varying lengths. The left one's a little shorter than the right one just because of the way the routing has to go. So you need one of each of those. And then back, way back when, when I took this apart, I cleaned this area for the throttle um, sleeve mechanism and the uh, cam. I cleaned that all out really well, so that's already been done. And same with the, the throttle sleeve. You want to check and make sure that the teeth look good on, on there. Um, they very commonly are worn out if they haven't been lubricated properly. These look very, very good and on both sides. So I can, I'm sure I can reuse those. Okay, and the LM47 grease, which you've seen this reference many times on, the, on these videos, is a really good choice for this particular application. So what we can do is gonna basically put a nice amount inside of here, around the uh, pivot point here, and also right in this area here, a little bit where the actual chain part's gonna slide. There's plenty of room for lubricant in there, so you can hardly overdo it. And then we'll let the chain cam right in like this, so that this part just is touching. And then you're going to notice that there's a line on the cam, and that should be facing outward in the same direction as the handlebar, because we need the right orientation for the um, throttle sleeve. Now, you can put a little bit of grease also on the throttle sleeve. You can put a little bit inside too. It doesn't hurt. Get a little bit of lubricant on there so you have a good throttle action. And then you'll note on the um, throttle sleeve that on one of the teeth, there is a little line and that needs to line up with the line on the cam so you get the right indexing. Just like a little scribe mark right on top of one of the teeth. See it right here. Okay, now I'm gonna put the cables in and before I do, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and use this boot. This is sort of an optional thing. They didn't use them on a lot of these later bikes, but it's not a bad idea to have it because it helps to just shield the cables for any water penetration. So before anything else, I'll just slide the cables through like this. Then pull all the slack out. One goes in the bottom 
whole wig is at the top like that, and then we can put the top plate on. If we get that all lined up right and you feel it kind of click into place like that. Now you just slide that boot right over there. There we go. Now for routing the cables, we're just gonna go down behind the fork tube and then just behind the steering lock. So now I've got them coming down just behind the fork tube, behind the steering lock, now alongside the frame backbone. The longer one will go over to this side. And the shorter one just comes straight down like that. So that's that. And I'm going just to um, remove the old cables and reattach the new ones. So just unscrew the adjuster all the way, pull it out from the carburetor, relax it, and then you can push the throttle butterfly all the way open against spring tension and then remove the cable. And for this, sometimes a, something like this, I have like a little 90 degree O-ring tool, works pretty well because if, if uh, they don't always come out super easy. So you can get down inside and just push that through like that, comes right out. So this one's actually starting to fray. So it's a good thing we did this work so we could change the throttle cable. And now the same way, just push the throttle butterfly open all the way, push the little barrel into the slot, the cable through the slot. And then you can just hold the cable back to take tension off of it while you thread it into the carburetor. And you want to have just a little bit of play in there so you get sort of your base adjustment, just a couple millimeters or so. So that's that. So that's that. That's it. Easy enough, and I'll just go do that on the other side too. Okie doke. Great, nice throttle action, looking good. All right, let's get on to the other side now. All right, so I've, I've taken this apart. I've put a little bit of grease on the pivot point, so it's all clean and nice, smooth action. And now this is this little grip wedge that needs to go in there, and it's a part that will make um, sort of a interference contact with the bar to keep the, the handle from rotating. And it's got a little, you can see that, a little sort of relief, round half moon cut out of it. And that fits right over where the bolt is. So you just slide that in and if you can feel how it kind of goes into place. And then carefully put everything together without dislodging that. Okay, now the, before tightening this down, I'm going to take the grip and lay it up on side there and sort of approximate the positioning that I want it to be in. And way back, many videos ago, we modified this K75 dash pad so that there'd be a little bit of clearance for the, the choke cable. And so I think that's pretty much where I want it to be. We can always make fine adjustments later. Very cool. Okay, I'm going to um, use the Liquid Molly um, rubber glue to put the grip on. There's a lot of different ways you can do that, different types of products, but this works pretty well. And so I take note that the seam on the grip here is facing the back. And so when I put the grip on there, I'm going to want that seam in the same way, because I like things to be very symmetrical. So just put a little thing, 
put, just put a little, a little bit on the inside of the grip. And you have to work kind of fast because it's best to get this on pretty quickly before it starts to dry. The glue acts as a lubricant for sliding the grip on. So I got a little bit on the inside here, a little bit on there, and now it slides nicely on there. Before going all the way, I'm just going to get a little bit of the excess out of there. And then put on the rest of the way. I've got the seam nice and straight, pretty well matched with the other side. Otherwise, it'll drive me nuts over the period of time. So that'll set up and be perfect. Okay, so we can offer the splitter if you want to replace it and it comes with a new boot or we have the boot just individually if they're cracked, which they invariably are. This one is definitely shot. And the connect, the uh, caps all kind of buggered up from just banging up against things for so many miles. So I'm just going to actually, in this case, replace the whole thing, but it's not always necessary to do that. So what you do on the splitter is just unscrew that like so. And then you, loose, you can loosen this adjuster here for the upper cable. What we're doing is we're replacing the upper cable. That's the primary thing we're trying to do here. A pair of needle nose pliers. Pull the cap back like so. Grab one of the cables carefully and unhook it like that. And then you can just let it go. The other one, same way, hold it, unhook it. There we go. Now I can just say like that. Take these cables out if you're replacing the part. And then we take the new splitter. So I actually don't need really any of this because I'm changing the cable. But normally if you're just replacing the splitter, you unhook this barrel from the center. There's a little slot there. And remove that. And then unscrew the splitter. Take that off. Replace the same way. In this case, we're putting a new, shorter um, upper cable on. It's quite a bit shorter. Makes a big difference going from one handlebar version to the other. If you don't change the cables too, you're going to just have way too much cable to manage. So it's an important part of this conversion. Okay, step one is to put the little boot for the splitter onto the cable and find just a little bit of lube. It goes a long way to facilitate that. You have to get the barrel through the little hole. And so what, one way to do that is to take a pair of sharp needle nose pliers, push them through the hole that you're trying to go through. And you can spread them in there and go in and grab that barrel. So you just pull it right through, boom. And that saves a lot of fiddling. And just slide it the rest of the way down like that. And so now we can take this new splitter and screw that on. Twist off that cap. I'm just gonna set that right onto those two cables. And there should be a little piece inside. Push the cable all the way through. And then you look at this thing and it's got a little detent or a little recess rather. And that's where this cable end goes in. So there's a, there's three slots. One of them is connected to the middle. Just set that in like that. And that's that part. And then just like we took it apart, what we could do is push on the, the choke lever to expose some cable, grab that cable with a needle nose, get that inside like so, and that one's ready. And then the other one, okay. So now we've got the two cables going in there. They're hooked into that little barrel. Center one's hooked into the other side. Now we can just screw it all back together. And I'm gonna just leave um, the the boot pulled back for right now because um, we're going to want to go back in and make some fine adjustments a little in a little bit. But I can route this back up the same way as the throttle cables.
Yeah, so just, just route these, the uh, throttle cable back up the same way as the throttle cables, and it's just gonna make a left instead of a right over into the choke lever, right like so. Let me put the cap on next. Okay, once again here you wanna definitely put a little bit of lubricant where the barrel's gonna go, where the piece is gonna slide so that it has a nice clean action. You can also put a little bit in the cavity here. Okay, so it just goes, the barrel just goes into that little, the little slot there. And then these are the other parts that came out of there. This is a little washer with these little steps on there. It's very self-evident how that goes. They, they have to fit in the corresponding little recess. And then you can put this screw in there. Great. You can feel the detents. Click, click. So you want to make sure that you have free play at the chokes. You can make adjustments here. We can also give it just a little bit more free play at this adjuster. There we go. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and just lock that down now. Torque doesn't take much. It is plastic and now I can slide that boot on. So Sano, that's all ready to go. Now, uh, clutch cable. I cleaned the uh, lever earlier, but you always want to make sure that you get that, the hole at the bottom of the clutch lever super clean and put some lubricant in there because as you actuate the clutch lever, it's very important that the barrel can rotate inside. If it doesn't, then the, it's gonna bend. Bend, 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 and eventually, if you bend a piece of wire lot, many times enough, or enough times, it'll break. And so that's why you wanna make sure that, that the lever is clean, well lubricated, and you get that kind of action going on when you pull the clutch lever in. You can pretty much just fill that cavity Let's put a little smear on the barrel itself. And when you push the, the barrel in, you see the grease kind of just push its way out. So you, that way you know you have enough in there. We'll route the cable behind the instrument cluster bracket. And then down inboard of the fork tube, run it through the frame gusset, then you can run it over that cross bar the, at the steering head, and down along the frame tube under the pushrod tubes. There we go. It's good routing. And then once you've got the cable all the way back Set in here, just a couple things. You want to make sure, here again, for the same reason as the clutch lever above, that the barrel is well lubricated. So you can put a, put a little bit of grease on, on that barrel. And also on the clutch lever itself. You take a screwdriver, kind of wedge it in to pry against the spring tension. Get a little bit of grease in there. Okay, so the clutch is all set up now. So we're gonna go ahead and probably put a clutch in this bike. So much more to do. But while we're at it and at this, uh, while we're on the subject, I'll just go through real quickly the clutch adjustment procedure, even though we'll be doing it again later. So I've got a piece of welding rod in this case that I've cut to 202 millimeters. And what we wanna do is set the, um, the cable length first, and then the free play. So, if you hold the cable, or the piece of wire, down at the gearbox housing on one end, and at the other end, at the bottom of the half moon of the clutch lever, when you do that, you'll have the proper base adjustment. In order to get that adjustment of 202 millimeters, 
here. Okay. I, I made adjustment on the cable here up at the lever so that I've got that 202 millimeters from the, uh, the back side of the, of the gearbox where the clutch cable goes through and the lower part of the half moon on the clutch cable on the lever. And once that's been set, then you want to set the free play. There's a lot of free play here right now because it has been set. Um, and that's done with a couple of wrenches on the gearbox lever. Loosen the lock nut. Okay, now I've, I've uh, uh, made adjustments to the bolt on the clutch actuation rod in such a way that I have about two to four millimeters of play here at the lever, at this gap here, before it starts to actuate the clutch. Now with a brand new cable, properly set cable length at 202 millimeters, I had to screw the adjuster in quite a bit. So that's a pretty good indicator that the clutch is pretty worn out, but we'll see when we get the gearbox out, but that probably is the case. But I'm still able to get adjustment, so even if we were to go ride it the way it is right now, it would be serviceable. So that's that. Now let's go on to the switches. I had plugged in the switches previously just for testing the electrics. Let me go ahead and unplug them again so we can route things. So it's, it's an okay condition, the switch. And if the sheathing were cracked, we have the conduit available so you can replace that rather than replace the whole switch if you want to. But we can save ourselves that bit right now and essentially start by hooking the switches up to the, to the handlebars. Okay, the bike before had the tall handlebars, so we've got a lot of wire here. It's just really gonna be a matter of finding a nice slick way to route them down and then we'll sort of bunch the wire up something like that near the connection plug and make it real tidy. Okay the routing is pretty much like this. It's underneath the handlebar, over the front of the upper triple clamp, and then down through the frame gusset, and then you're right on target. And that's a pretty clean routing. And I'll do the same on the other side. So there's already quite a lot of wires, or rather cables going through this frame gusset here. So in order to keep those free, I'm running this left-hand cable across the front of the steering head and then down through this right-hand side frame gusset. It's also a straighter shot to the, to the connection point. All right, I think that worked out pretty good. I'm just gonna place a couple of, couple of uh, zip ties on the bars and strategically anchor things. Um, wait, I'll wait a bit with that though, because I want to be able to move the handlebars back and forth, but everything's in place. Everything seems to be routed pretty well. And another switch this is the clutch switch. Bring that one down too. And then, and then the, finally, the last wire is the brake light switch. Okay, not much really to any of that, just looking to make some clean wiring. Okay, moving on to the instruments. Now I noticed that at least one of the bulbs was shot on this, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out, which is easy enough to do right now with the instrument cluster out. All right, so I got the, the um, 
instrument lights pulled out of their sockets. It's pretty easy to reach up and pull those out. And the clock light, I'm testing it. Now it the bulb works, but the voltmeter bulb's out of order. So let's re just replace them both. But even better than that, we're gonna put some LED bulbs in there. They're much brighter and they come, in there's two of them here, so we'll re just replace them both. So it's simple enough to just do that. All right, now let's test those for function. Oh yeah. Both work now. Nice and bright too, much brighter than those incandescent bulbs that we took out. All right. So I'm just gonna put them back in again. And now let's give the instruments a once over. Okay, so what we noticed was that, I think it was the uh, speedometer illumination was out, or the tack, one or the other was out. So no matter what, we would go in and replace the bulbs on this, but we're gonna do something better. We're gonna install an LED system from CatDash, and uh, very simple. So start by taking apart this housing with these three Phillips screws. Now this part here in the middle, this is where the gang plug screw goes in. And it's very common to see those cracked. This one's not, which is great. This is in good shape. But if they are, once it's exposed like that, you can actually go in and maybe put a little ring around there, a, a small, very small clamp or some kind of ring could be made to push on there to kind of hold it all together. It could be reused, but we don't have to do it on this one. Okay, the next thing is to remove the center section by removing these screws here. And these two screws here. Notice that the first four screws that I removed here are machine screws and the last two are these sort of like wood screw looking things. Now this part can be very carefully removed as well. Okay, at this point I'm gonna go ahead and re remove both instruments And then you'll want to first loosen these. Just basically take all the screws out. So the tachometer comes out with those three wires attached like that. I'm just going to set that off to the side here for a moment. And speedo lifts right out like so. Set that aside here. So this, this housing is actually technically in pretty good condition, but I'll show you that we also do have replacements that are beautifully made. So there we have it. You can really see how the writing and all that's really faded on this housing. You know, I think I might have to just replace it because everything else is so nice on this bike. Um, really nice housing, good condition, but I think this would even be kind of cooler. So I'll go ahead and put a new one on. I wasn't actually planning on it, but when I really look at it myself, I kind of go, hmm. I think I'm gonna be happier looking at this one. We'll save that, that'll come in handy for some, some other project. Now the same thing kind of goes with these visor rings. These are replaceable, they can be removed. These are in okay condition. So I'll just leave them on there and put new ones on. So if you have a, a situation where your visor rings are cracked or a lot of times they'll crack right in through here and the, or they're missing all together, they are available from us here and easy enough to put on. There's a little notch um, on the one end of it, on the skinny end, and that lines up at the bottom here. Just line up that notch, and then sort of 
feed it into the groove. You just have to be patient and push this rubber lip into the groove all around the instrument and then it fits really nicely. And oh, by the way, there's a couple of different versions of this part. You'll find them all on our website depending on what model you have. This is 81 on version. So you've got the early version, 74, 5, 6, 7, and then kind of in between there, um, there's a 79, 80 version, and then you have this newer version. Might be off on the dates a little bit, but that's pretty much the deal. You find the right one. We have all of those normally always in stock. Okay, the new housing comes with this gasket here. If you were just replacing the instruments, it's a good idea to replace that gasket as well. Here's the original one, because it gets a little bit smashed and it's just better to, that's not an expensive part, nor is it difficult to replace. So we won't need that today because we have the, we're doing the new housing, I decided. And the other thing we do need to install, however, is this perimeter O-ring here. And that's included this is, the, this is the hardware that comes with the housing. Let's go ahead and get a little more organized here and have a look at all that. Okay, so these are all the bits that come with the housing. It comes with new screws and it comes with um, a new attachment plate. You can see the old one here is a bit rusted, probably still functional, but this is a new part that's supplied. So you see how it just kind of lays in there. You can see it on this original here. It lays right in like so. And then we'll take one of these bolts and a washer and screw that in. All you need to do is just start them. You don't need to tighten them at this point. Okay, now we can see how it was done originally, there's, this is where the two pieces sort of overlap. And that's pretty, it's kind of arbitrary, but that's a good, good spot, one, one side or the other. So we'll just proceed to lay this piece of rubber in there. It doesn't really need any adhesive. You can just very carefully push it in behind the little pegs and to do so, a little screwdriver to help it is not a bad thing. Okay, there we go. That's pretty well set all the way around. Now, if you were not replacing the housing, then no problem. We have the seals, but you'd want it, you should always replace that seal, I think, when you take it apart. Okay, now the, the Speedo can carefully be pushed into place. Bit of a snug fit, but it goes in perfectly. All right, so now let's look at this next cool part from Cat Dash, New York. Okay, so as you can see, this is gonna be replacing that part. And this part here, I believe is just for packaging. So we can go ahead and take that off. So it's really a beautiful part and, and the biggest difference is it's absent the bulb holders because everything's LED. So we'll just unplug these wires and plug them onto the new part. Brown one, the green one, the red one. There we go. Okay, so we'll just sort of simultaneously put these pieces into place. Great. Everything should fall right into place. You don't want to force anything. Be very gentle with all the parts. Well, now we can use these new screws 
and attach the instruments. So whenever doing something like this, just I like to start all the screws, put them in most of the way, but not tight. Get everything lined up before tightening any one screw. Okay, that's good. Now, be careful not to over tighten these screws. It's just plastic, so it, it doesn't, doesn't take much to hold these parts into place. So that's all good. Now, the next part to go back on is this one here. And you can see how these gaskets are all kind of mashed and out of place. Um, so it's a really good idea to replace these to keep moisture, etc., out of the uh, instruments. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the old gaskets first. And they have a, a self-adhesive. So if you get lucky, they'll come off kind of like these do. Let me take some brake parts cleaner just very sparingly to clean off the, uh, the glue residue on this part just to prepare the surface for the new seals that I'm about to install. So we'll have an extra outer gasket. This is part of the gasket set, which contains the outer, or the outer seal ring that we just installed and these two other parts here sold in the set. So it's a very simple thing to do. Just install it in this area. So we'll just do that. Okay, there we go. All set, now ready to reinstall this part. And now we're ready to install this final piece here. So there we have it. I think a big improvement over the faded old one. I mean, it's had a lot of sunlight in many years, so that's pretty cool. And um, ready to put this back on the bike now and move on. I'll plug that right back in again here. Firmly push it in and then there's that little darn screw. Goes in there. Don't over tighten it. All right, we'll just give these a little tightening. Now reattaching the speedometer cable. Great. Man, that looks pretty cool, I think. And let's give it the old smoke test here. Look at that. Look how bright those lights are. It's pretty cool. Nice. And the instruments are illumination, all four gauges. Ready for some nighttime Blue Ridge Mountain riding. All right. So now you can see why we didn't put the, the windshield on yet because there was so much that it would have, would have been just a pain in the rear end to get to with it installed. But now that everything's bolted in and everything's working, let's put the windshield on. Okay, we got a bunch of bits here to look at. So first of all, there's this rubber seal that a lot of times isn't even on a lot of bikes that I've seen, but it's a good thing to have. It basically lays right in here beneath the plastic um, upper part here, the, the instrument holder, and forms a seal between the, the uh, windscreen and the, the fairing to minimize the amount of water that'll come up through there. So it's, um, thought something gets left off a lot, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it on. It belongs there. So the rubber supplied a little bit longer than it needs to be, which is a good thing. I'm just gonna take a little piece of tape that doesn't have too much adhesive on it and basically 
just tape that over like that to hold it in place so it's easily removable later. So the windshield that I've decided to use on this one is this Seaman Rock shield. And so what's kind of neat about it is that it has this little extra little lift there. And it's a nice looking screen. It's got, we're going to have to remove the uh, plastic film first. I'm just going to like lift it off the edge where the rivets are going to go in. Not entirely remove it. Okay, the screen is made for Siebenrock by MRA in Germany and they actually supply you with all the parts that you need. The seal strip I just put on, I forgot that it actually comes with it. So no big deal. We'll figure out what to do with that. But um, also you have these plastic rivets and these little rubber washers. And the other thing that's included here is a couple of edge protectors. So there's a couple ways you could go about doing this. You could either use the black one or the clear one. Both are supplied depending on what you like. And it also comes with a couple of little clips to hold it on. Now this is not a bad system because um, it's not original. The original one looks like this. And it's arguably cooler, but when it's gonna be long enough. So you, you have a choice, you know. You can put on the one that comes with the shield, little plastic stuff, or you can put on the original edging, which is what I'm gonna do, because I like to keep it as original as possible, except for like handlebars and things like that. Um, so I'll do that first. It's plenty long, so I'm just gonna leave a little piece hanging over, because I can trim it all later on. And just press this on. Okay, it takes some fiddling to get that on. It's not easy to push that on. Just, you have to kind of work it on there, but that means it's probably not gonna come off either easily. So that's a good thing. So I'm just gonna kind of run that around the edge like that and do the same on this side. Trim it and run that around. Okay, actually it's gonna probably just go straight down. Trim that in a bit, okay. So that's how that's going to set on there. So a lot of ways to put this on, you know, some folks use plastic screws that are kind of easy to deal with. But the, the original way is with these little plastic rivets. And these little plastic or little rubber washers, which are both available individually from us or they're supplied with this particular windshield. So you put the little washer on, on first like that. And now as far as installing this, there is a special tool. This is what it looks like. It's basically a steel outer housing with this thing that pushes through. The diameter of these little pins is three millimeters. So the idea is that this fits inside and it sort of supports the pin from bending. As you push this in, it pushes in and it spreads out the little four little fingers and it holds the windshield in place. It's, it's a pretty neat tool. Um, it would be fairly easy to make something like this though. I think really just taking a bolt, like a eight millimeter or maybe even a bigger one, three eighths bolt or something. And then if you had a lathe, just center drill it out to approximately three millimeter hole and then put in a, a, a three millimeter punch down that hole, it would effectively be the same thing. So something like this would be pretty easy to make yourself because when you try to push these pins in, 
a lot of times they'll sort of bend. It's kind of cheesy. But anyway, um, over the years, I've experimented with different types of lubricants for inserting these pins. And the best one I found is a little bit of spit. No sugar coating it. It works. Just put that in, rivet in, line up your tool, and pushes right in the center like that. So I got one in there just to hold it in place. And now before I put any rest, any of the rest in, I'm just going to go around and stick the rest of these in, get everything lined up, and then go about putting them, putting them in. Yeah, everything lines up beautifully, so I'm just going to be putting one in right after the other and get those in there before the spit dries. Okay, cool. So we got that pretty well sorted out. Hang on one second. There's one more straggler here. Okay, cool. All the rivets are in and I'm going to pull the plastic off now. Pretty cool. I'm going to just go ahead and trim the excess pieces of rubber that are here. Pretty cool. Okay, so the next little detail is going to be, we need some mirrors on this bike so we can see where we've been. And um, there's two kinds of mirrors available. There is, these are both made, these are made by the original equipment manufacturer for BMW. And I'm just going to show you the difference here between the two. So this is what we what they would normally call a low bar mirror. Um, it has a band immediately after the attachment point. And this is the, typically the high bar mirror, which has a little higher band, as you can see the difference. Now, if you were installing a, an original BMW S fairing, the clearance in here is quite a bit less, and you might have to use the low bar mirror. But because this, we're using the Siebenrock fairing, which comes up a little bit higher. It gives a little bit better protection. We can use these high bar mirrors. I think they are much more attractive looking. You can see the difference. So that's the high bar mirror, and that's the low bar mirror. Now, the high bar mirror is gonna be a little, little bit more trim, a little bit more tucked in. I think, with the, considering we're using the ceiling rock fairing, I think that's, that's the way I'm gonna go. Pretty cool. And then as a final touch, we have one of these little um, plastic caps to go on the nut, as was originally the case with, in the factory. There we go. All right, well, here we go. Look at where, from this point forward, we're done. We've got a few more things to do, tail section, seat, fuel tank, uh, fuel valves, a couple, couple odds and ends, but we're getting close to having this um, conversion part of it all done. So tune in next time when we have our next video. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel if uh, you're not already so you'll get alerts when the next one comes out. And check our website as well as links in this video for some of the parts that we're using on this video. And don't forget to check out our cool new overalls. And it's been a pleasure. I look forward to seeing you next time. And it's William from Boxer 2 Valve. And have a great day.